tell your story. Change the conversation. Organized by students. TEDx Youth at SHC. When I was younger, my mom told me that if I ever found someone that I clicked with, someone I could trust, someone who would always be there for me, I should hold on to them and never let them go. And when I got older, my parents told me that when I went to high school and none of my grade school friends went with me, I should hold on to them because they would be friends I would keep for life. But what if I did let them go? Or what if I let something get in the way? Since the day Alex and I met in kindergarten, everyone expected something of us. We went to a small school with about 60 kids in a grade, so we knew each other pretty well. However, it wasn't until the second grade when we became best friends. And from then on, everyone expected us to date, or at least like each other. Parents did, teachers did too. I once had a teacher pull me aside after recess and ask if I had a crush on her. And don't get me started on our classmates and friends. My basketball teammates used to constantly ask me if I had a crush on Alex. And when girls started becoming a big deal because of hormones and whatnot, guys would drill me about M. And that weirded us both out, because we always saw ourselves just as friends and nothing more. But they got the better of us. Everyone constantly reassuring me, oh, you love Alexander, you just can't see it yet. Or you're perfect for each other, just let Cupid do his thing. Made me actually believe I had a crush on this loser. <laughs> no offense. None taken, loser. But I too began to feel like I liked M around the fifth grade. We finally had enough and decided maybe we should date. And it all began with a flirty conversation. And it wasn't what you might call a smooth conversation because we were only in the eighth grade at the time. Remember how that went? How could I forget? It was the most awkward conversation I've ever had. You've done so much worse. Hey, uh, Alex? Uh, yeah. I, uh, have a crush on someone. Guess who? Um, I don't know. Who? Well, I... He's tall. He wears glasses. And he's standing right next to me. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Well, uh, the feeling's mutual. <laughs> We're going to spare you guys the details on the rest of that conversation, because it just gets worse from there. But in short, Em and I quickly became the coolest couple on campus. Which was pretty easy because we were the only couple on campus. <laughs> and that is when things started going south. You see, unfortunately for us, the coolest couple on campus was coincidentally the most awkward couple on campus. I'm what people would call socially inept. And Alex isn't exactly the smoothest guy out there either. I mean, look at the way he's standing. <laughs> Okay, to be honest, I don't exactly know how to stand up here. But back to us. Yeah, we went on a few dates, and they were actually pretty okay. Like we had, when we had a picnic at our favorite spot, or got lost on Muni and wound up at Baker Beach. But I think the first time I realized this was not going to work out was at our eighth grade dance. We were excited. We, the most experienced couple in the entire grade, would finally show ourselves off to our peers. But in retrospect, we really should have seen it coming. As soon as we stepped onto the dance floor, everyone came up to us and took pictures of us, like we were some kind of museum exhibit. <laughs> and to some extent, yeah, I guess we should have liked that attention. But something didn't click. But by far, the worst moment of the entire evening was when my friends dragged me into the middle of the dance floor. And my friends shoved me into it. And all 58 of our classmates surrounded us singing, Emily and Alex sitting in a tree, K-I-S-S-I-N-G. And it was at that moment that I didn't feel like Em's boyfriend anymore. I felt more like some kind of prey, shot by predators, ready to tear me or us apart. I tried to break my way out of the circle, but they just pushed me back in. Their singing got louder, my anxiety skyrocketed, and I felt as if I couldn't breathe. And you know how I finally got out? I grabbed M by the arm, swung her like a hammer at the wall of people, and jumped free. <laughs> so there we were, the coolest couple on campus, hiding in the back of the dance hall, awkwardly dancing with each other, 
and trying not to let that traumatic experience ruin the rest of our evening together. However, it didn't help that after the dance, teachers began to interrogate us on exactly what we did back there. <laughs> but please, Em, you in that dress? Sorry, I remember exactly what you wore. She wore black and purple stripes. Why didn't you just ask me for help? Okay, it was 2014, Alexander. No one knew anything about fashion. You look like an optical illusion. <laughs> Despite my horrendous fashion choice. Choices, plural. <laughs> Choices. Something still didn't feel right. I thought I'd enjoy the attention. I thought I'd have my fairy tale moment with my Prince Charming. Though, you're not exactly what I'd call charming. Oh, please. But I too thought I would like the spotlight. I mean, it sounded great. Really fun, actually, because everyone loved us. But all the spotlight did was shine a light on the reality I wasn't ready to confront. But you know what? Despite all these warnings to stop, Alex and I continued to date. Maybe it was because we were afraid to disappoint everyone. How heartbroken would everyone be if the coolest couple on campus broke up? Or maybe we were too afraid to lose each other. But that's exactly what started to happen. Em and I started treating each other more as significant others and less as friends. And this became most obvious in, of all places, our texts. What used to be full-length conversations about our passions and aspirations turned into few-worded texts every day. Hey. Hey. Have a great day. Thanks. You too. Love you. Love you too. Night. Good night. Love you. Love you too. And that was it. Some cycle that would repeat for months on end. And it became clearer to both of us that we were losing not only the passion for the relationship, but for each other. And eventually, as this continued, we found that enough was enough. On January 24th, 2015, a year and 10 days after we broke up, we broke up. Sorry, I meant to say a year and 10 days after we started. These memories get fuzzy. I lost my best friend in the entire world. I finally found someone I clicked with, someone I could trust, someone who would always be there for me. And I let him go. And I let something get in the way. We used to always talk to and confide in each other, but now we were silent for months and I didn't know how to make it better. To this day, I'm not sure how Alex and I got back on track. Maybe it was our mutual friends, or maybe it was our history. Personally, I think it's because we started having a ton of personal problems, high schoolers, and we just wanted to rant to each other again. What shocked me most was after months of not speaking to each other, it didn't take us very long to get back on track. Don't get me wrong, we worked hard to fix us. We talked through our problems inside and outside of our relationship. But to be completely honest with you, I think we just found something deep within ourselves that convinced us this was never going to happen again. And after we got past all that, things started becoming normal again. So normal, in fact, we started to treat our relationship like a joke. A funny, messed up joke. Alex and I decided to turn heartbreak into happiness. Every year, on the anniversary of our breakup, Alex and I instead celebrate our friendship by recreating old dates. And every January 24th, we text each other, happy breakup day. Let's never date again. I agree. <laughs> this year, Emma and I celebrate 10 years of friendship. That's right. After a horrendous relationship and horrendous breakup, we managed to revitalize our friendship and, if anything, we made it stronger. We're practically family now. <laughs> Time apart and away from Alex made me realize how important he is to me and how lucky I am to have him in my life. Yeah, and as much as I love to rag on M for her height, her personality, her singing, her dancing that's about as stiff as a wooden board, her messy room she hasn't cleaned in, what, five years, and her mild lactose intolerance. You know what, Alexander? Maybe 10 years of friendship is enough for us. And her constant interruptions. She's still a wonderful person who has helped shape me into who I am today. Looking back, we really shouldn't have dated. 
But to be completely honest with you, I don't regret a single moment. We learned firsthand what was really important to us. So who cared if the coolest couple on campus didn't get married? All that we cared about is we didn't let some breakup separate us forever. When I was younger, my mom told me that if I found someone I clicked with, someone I could trust, someone who would always be there for me, I should hold on to them and never let them go. And when I got older, my parents told me that when I went to high school and none of my grade school friends went with me, I should still keep in touch with them because they would be friends I'd keep for life. And I promised myself, even if things got rough, I would do anything and everything to hold on to that someone special. So, to date or not to date? That might be the question. But to lose someone that you really love or to hold on to a friend for life, that is not one. Happy 10 years, Em. It's been great. And here's to many more. Thank, Thank you. you.